Welcome back to The Ed Show. The Republican chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Darrell Issa, wants to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt. Today, Issa announced his committee will consider a contempt resolution on June 20th. He claims it's not a political witch hunt. But ultimately, it's not about going to contempt. It's about getting cooperation in legitimate discovery. And in this case, they're not asserting uh, privilege. They're simply not giving the documents the American people deserve. This resolve revolves around the Justice Department's fast and furious operation. Today, the Deputy Attorney General sent Chairman Issa a letter calling the contempt resolution premature. But Chairman Issa wants to grandstand, as he did last week. I want to ask you, first of all, today, have you and your attorneys produced internally the materials responsive to the subpoenas? Uh, we believe that we have responded to the subpoena. No, Mr. Attorney General, you're not a good witness. You know, I appreciate that there was hostility between the Attorney General and myself. Can I just make you? What, what I, I'd like to uh, yield uh, to the Attorney General at this point, please. Well, I, I, with all due respect to uh, Chairman Issa, uh, he says there's hostility between us. I don't feel that. You know, I understand he's asking questions. I'm trying to respond as best I can. I'm not feeling hostile at all. I'm, I'm pretty calm. I'm okay. Thank God for calm black men. Here's part of the Justice Department's official response. Chairman Issa's latest maneuver is unfortunate and unwarranted, particularly given the ongoing discussions. From the beginning, Chairman Issa has distorted the facts, ignored testimony, and flung inaccurate accusations at the Attorney General and others. And this latest move fits within that tired political playbook. Let's turn to Eleanor Holmes Norton, Congresswoman from the District of Columbia, and another Georgetown colleague who's on the House Oversight Committee. Congresswoman uh, uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton, thank you for coming on. Of course, good to be with you. The ranking Democrat on your committee, Elijah Cummings, has said, quote, holding someone in contempt of Congress is one of the most serious and formal actions our committee can take, and it should not be used as a political tool to generate press as part of an election year witch hunt against the Obama administration. What are your thoughts about that? Do you agree with uh, Congressman Cummings? Uh, wholly. Moreover, it shouldn't be used as a negotiating tactic. And Chairman Issa virtually admitted that in, in the clip you just showed. He said, oh, it's not about going to contempt. It's about, quote, getting uh, more cooperation from the attorney general. The documents subpoenaed are under court seal or pertain to ongoing criminal investigations or are part of a, a, fixing, a fishing expedition to see if there's anything there. And, and what's really important, I think, to know here is that the American people must think, well, Fast and Furious is all about stone throwing between Republicans and Democrats. I bet you that 99.9 percent wouldn't know what Fast and Furious was all about. So I would like a minute on that, because this is a double tragedy. The first and foremost, by far, tragedy was the killing of an agent, a right. border control agent, when some guns coming from the United States. The second tragedy, to be sure, not nearly as tragic, but it's important to understand the Bush and the Obama administration felt compelled to use what are called gun walking tactics, because they, that is to say, trying to let the guns go in a sting operation because the Republicans bought and paid for by the gun lobby, refused to fill a gaping uh, hole in federal laws that makes it impossible to prosecute people who sure. engage in purchases, mass purchases of guns or gun running. The okay. law simply doesn't allow that, so that they tried to follow these guns. One of these guns killed a devoted agent. We have heard nothing about that in committee, and I'm, right. I'm on the committee. Okay. It's because they've been trying to, to, to see who struck John. Right. Uh, and and in, in something that began, tactics that began in the Bush administration and continued into the Obama sure. administration. Sure. Well, that's, that, that's very clear to make that uh, point that this began under the, uh, the uh, Bush administration with a different name. It has continued under the Obama administration under this rubric of fast and furious. Here's Chairman Issa recently calling the Obama administration corrupt. 
But again, we're very busy in Washington with a corrupt government, with a government that I said uh, more than a year ago was perhaps because of the money, because of the, the amount of TARP and, uh, and stimulus funds, was going to be the most corrupt government uh, in history, and it's proving to be that. Now, Chairman Issa has tried his best to create corruption where it doesn't exist, hasn't he? He does. And when you use a word like that, and I thought that Chairman Ice had moved off of that kind of, uh, kind of language, you better be able to come up <laughs> with, with the fast and furious or other evidence to back that up. We don't, throw away, we don't throw, throw around words like that, especially when we're talking about the Attorney General of the United States. Nobody's ever tied him to fast and furious or, or to any subpoenas or to knowing anything ab about this. So it's, it's the kind of reckless charge that leads the American people to say, oh, who cares? They're <laughs> looking at the economy to see if Things going to happen to it, and paying no attention to this. I wonder if these subpoenas will ever go to the House floor. No, it never has a cabinet official uh, been, been uh, has a contempt citation against a cabinet official been enforced by the courts of the United States. Do you right. really expect uh, the courts to come forward now and be dragged into partisan subpoenas? I don't, Eric. I yeah, don't. I don't think we're going to see that at all. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, thank you so very much. Always a pleasure. New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg is out defending the city's controversial stop and frisk policy. Is it racial profiling? Donna Lieberman and Heather McDonald weigh in on that. And later, United Healthcare promises to keep key provisions in place even if the president's health care law is overturned. But is it a goodwill gesture or a PR stunt? Stay tuned.